Okay, so um, this is the page uh, for your course, LMS page for your course. I think uh, almost everyone of you all have enrolled in this course by now. Um, so this is the meeting link that we are going to use uh, every day. It's a recurrent link. Uh, here, of course, you can find the course outline and I uploaded the lecture material, the slides um, under this tab. So after this lecture, I'm going to upload this recording as well, but uh, try as much as possible to attend lectures um, rather than listening to a recording. Even though you missed some lecture, make sure that you cover the recording before the next lecture. That's going to be very important because um, if you missed one week, it's quite a bit hard to catch up uh, in a blank way uh, in the next week, upcoming week. So make sure you do that. Um, so after every lecture, after every session, I would be uploading the uh, recording under the lecture tab. So uh, even though you participated, you can um, take a watch um, if you missed any. Um, okay, so I hope you can see my screen. Um, this is uh, basically the course outline. This is our course code AMT325.0. So uh, it is uh, two credit codes. Um, status is optional only for the general degree students. I think uh, special degree students has, have to take this. And this is the prerequisite. You have to know mathematical statistics second course. And um, you can just read through the intended and learning outcomes. Um, so, yeah. We are starting off with introduction to regression, what really this regression is and where this is coming from, why we are using it, things like that. And um, going off to simple linear regression, normal error regression model. So you might not know all these, but you will learn with the time. Uh, at FA1 Miss Formative Assignment 1, I might not give this assignment at this point itself, but I will um, inform you how I'm going to give this. Uh, actually, I thought of giving you assignments rather than giving a mid, uh, because you can score. If I give you assignments, you can score more. But I expect you from your end to uh, do the assignments on time, submit it on time, because late submissions would not be acceptable. It's really hard to handle. Uh, when it comes to late submissions and it's really unfair with those who have um, submitted on time. So that's why I uh, am strictly looking into this uh, when it comes to assignments because I usually give you uh, 20 to 30 days to finish even, even a very small assignments. I know you all are packed up by your end. I know that this is not the only course that you have to do. I know that. Uh, but still, I'm giving you a lot of chances, a lot of time, a lot of space uh, to do your assignments on time. Most probably this would take up to 40% from your final grade. Um, usually my assignments would uh, uh, take um, uh, 40 marks uh, for my uh, convenience. Uh, it doesn't mean you are getting 40 marks for, the, for your final paper, but I'm going to average it out. With, uh, it depends on the number of assignments that I give you. This is planned for uh, two assignments. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the more you get assignments, the more you can score. That's what I know from my end. Um, so I can set the paper, final paper for 60 marks. That, that's really, that really depends on the department requirements. So let's see how it goes. Uh, anyway, it's better to be ready. And uh, yeah, so after the assignment, you are going to have a prediction of new observations, ANOVA, analysis of uh, variance, then model diagnostics. I know you all are not familiar with these terms. Let's learn these. Lack of it, matrix approach, approach to uh, simple linear regression. And then you're coming to multiple linear regression, which incorporates more than one independent variables in the model. Mm, then uh, we have to handle some we have to handle some dummies as well. Finally, we are going to have a practical session that would take uh, a lecture, yeah, a lecture, not two, maybe using mini tab. Um, so I'm going to do the practical for you. So you all should be able to read a mini tab output. Uh, you're not going to get any practical session for your final exam or even for an assignment. What we expect you to is you should be able to read the output and extract information out of the mini type output. So I'll train you for that. 
So that is basically the course outline. Um, these are the reference books, but still, uh, this is universal, you know, you can uh, get any reference from YouTube, just go for good links, good references. Um, some uh, there are some uh, university lectures lecturers who uh, put up youtube videos so go with that uh, find the best resources for you uh, you don't have to stick stick to these two books only you can search and get any information that you really need to uh, i'm going to cover everything uh, possible from this course itself but it's not really enough uh, when it comes to research when you're going to really apply this in practice uh, you might come across different different uh, problems, issues, and practical scenarios. It's not the theory all the time. So you're using uh, you're you're just uh, learning the most basic stuff here. Uh, yes, we are learning advanced stuff as well. But when it comes to application, you have to learn a lot. You have to independent learn independently learn a lot. So uh, make use of internet. Make use of um, online freely available online sources uh, so that is going to add you some advantage um okay so we can start off before that do you have any questions regarding the syllabus or regarding anything in this course that you want to know you can speak up otherwise we can start off the lesson any questions And uh, at the same time, you can unmute and talk. You can unmute and interrupt me at any time because I might not be uh, checking the chat box all the time. Uh, you can anyway put anything in the chat box, that's fine. But I might miss if you keep on putting in things in the chat box. So I prefer um, you to interrupt me even uh, when I'm doing the lecture and uh, ask whatever you want to related to the subject. So uh, can... Someone please confirm if there's no issue. If there is, you can ask. Okay, so I have to assume that you all don't have any issues. I like it if you speak, uh, it's okay. So starting off with what is regression? Um, okay, so this says regression analysis is a statistical technique, of course it is highly statistical. For investigating and modeling, we'll see what modeling is. You know what is investigation. Um, the relationship between a dependent variable and independent variable or variables. So when it comes to simple linear regression, you always go with one dependent variable and one independent variable. When you come to multiple linear regression, it goes with one dependent variable and a couple of independent variables. If you want to incorporate more than one dependent variable, you call it multivariate. So in this course, we are not handling that multivariate um, stuff, multivariate regression here. We are handling only the basic regression analysis. We are not handling multivariate techniques. So regression is all about, under this course, it's all about one dependent variable with a single or multiple independent variables. So um, in terms that we are familiar with, dependent variable is the Y variable. Independent variable or variables are the X or Xs that we have. Depending on X, we model Y. That is what we do. And we try to find the form of the relationship how these variables are related to each other. When one is changing by this much amount, how the dependent variable changes. So basically that is what we are going to model and analyze and interpret. So that is all about, not all about, this is just the motivation statement for what regression analysis is. Um, okay, I should not have done that. Right, um, so what is modeling? It's basically we input something uh, to the nature and we get an output. Uh, so aim is to understand the nature using the data collected. It attains by either 
data models or algorithmic models. Okay, so we collect a set of data from the NASA and we clean it up, we analyze it, we um, put it into some, um, some calcula calculation or some process, and then we take the output. It's simply the input process output thing. Okay, and uh, data models, you can uh, mathematically say it like this, response variable is a function of predictor variables, parameters, and error. So parameter is uh, basically uh, the weight of how the predictor variable uh, affects the response variable. Predictor variable means the X variables. Variables that we use to predict something is called the predictor variables. It's another name given to X variables or the independent variables. It can be just one predictor variable or an independent variable. It can be multiple. We call it multiple linear regression. And of course, the relationship is linear. That's why we put the word linear into this. There's nonlinear regression as well. Um, yeah, we are not going to handle that here as well. Response variable is basically the Y variable, the dependent variable, so you can give any name to that. Um, so you have to know all those terms because uh, when it comes to the paper, even when it comes to the real life, you'll have to know all these. Uh, response variable is also called the dependent variable or the Y variable. Um, and the predictor variable is also called independent variable or the X variable, or you can either say the regressor variable. So that is going to be a new term for you. I'll write it for that, R write it for you. Um, can I make note on this? Simple stuff. Dependent variable or um, response variables. This is the response that you are um, recording response variable x you call independent d e n t variable or you can say um predictor variable or either you can say regressor regressor variable And for the weights that we give to uh, our independent variables are called the regression parameters. And also we have to inc incorporate some error that is a random term. So um, let's move on and uh, you will learn how to define all those. Uh, you don't have to write everything. You can either take a screenshot or uh, you can write later on if you want to. Um, anyway, I'm, I have already shared these slides with you. Whatever the extra things that I write on board, you can take a screenshot simply, uh, or you can write it, that's fine. Um, okay. Right, so even in regression, we have a lot of forms. Linear regression, which we are discussing within this course. Logistic regression, uh, that really depends on how your response variable is formed. Uh, as in, if your response variable is in continuous case, you always go with this, or you can either go with nonlinear regression if the relationship is not linear, right? You go with these two. Logistic regression comes when your response variable has two categories. For example, uh, yes, no questions. Why can be either yes or no. So. So things like that goes under logistic regression. Um, so here within regression analysis, we discuss on linear regression. <clears throat> okay. Algorithmic models are going uh, more for the data science side. In this approach, it is assumed that the nature is complex and unknown. So here the nature is known. Nature is known. We, we know we collect data and we know the output uh, depending on the data and output, we give the model. But when it comes to these, uh, we don't know those. We Even we don't know the algorithm sometimes. We use machine learning techniques, neural network, regression 
factories, data mining and machine learning techniques. So the, those are not uh, coming under classical statistics. So here we are not going to handle this. We are going to handle only this. Right. So if you are more interested on this, you can um, read through this as an additional material. Um, so starting off with correlation before moving on to regression, why we are using this regression, why can't we use correlation? So if you can remember what correlation is, with where you learned under your mathematical statistics course. Um, I'll just give you out a simple example. So let's say this is some dependent variable and this is some independent variable. Let's say you have a couple of observations like this. This is basically a scatter plot. This is a scatter plot, right? So correlation gives you the strength between these two variables. gives you the strength. If we define the correlation coefficient, there are two, Spearman and Pearson's. So for example, let's say Pearson's correlation coefficient. You all have learned these. Now you have to recall. If it is Pearson's correlation coefficient, these two variables are going to be quantitative. It has to be quantitative. We cannot incorporate qualitative variables as these in Pearson's correlation analysis. It should be quantitative. It should be measurable as a quantity, okay? And it should be either in interval or ratio scale. It cannot be nominal, it cannot be ordinal. Those are the scales of measurements of data which you have learned in the mathematical statistics first and second courses. Both the courses I think you're learning this. So the data should be interval or ratio scale if you are going to handle the Pearson's correlation analysis. Otherwise you have to go for Spearman if it is in ordinal scale. Anyway, so in correlation, we usually denote it in terms of simple R. It is varied between negative one and positive one. If R is equal to zero, we say there's no relationship between the two quantitative variables or two interval or ratio scale variables. If it is one, we say there's a perfect a positive linear relationship between the two variables. Always, when it comes to peers and analysis, the relationship is linear. Linear, okay. Relationship must be linear. We do not uh, talk about Pearson's correlation coefficient for non radial relationships. That is why when we are interpreting R, the correlation coefficient, we always use the magnitude to say the strength of the relationship, if it is very close to, uh, if the absolute value of this is close to one, in other words, if R is very close to one or very close to negative one, we say it's near perfect linear relationship, depending on the sign of this, we give the direction, whether it is positive linear relationship or a negative linear relationship. The, le the, the word linear must be there when you're interpreting this, because we do not talk about nonlinear relationships when it comes to Pearson's correlation analysis. So R can take any value from negative one to positive one, including those. If it is one, we say the, Linear relationship is perfect. For each and every y, you have a perfect linear relationship. It can be either positive or negative. If it is one, it is a 
positive linear relationship when which means when you increase x by one unit you uh, uh, increase y by that unit so a perfect linear relationship when it is very close to one you you could say a strong positive linear relationship or you can say if it is 0 0.99 something which is very very close to one you could say near perfect linear rela positive linear relationship right similarly when it goes to the negative side you can say negative linear relationship when x is increasing y decreases if that is the case you go with the negative side negative means uh, unit increase in x cause y to decrease in some units so perfectly negative means you are getting a perfect line you are you're getting all the observations in a perfectly negatively sloped line so that is what about pearson's correlation but still what you can see here is a cloud of data it's like a cloud you cannot predict using correlation what you can say is all about the relationship the association between the two variables whether it is linear whether it is positive or whether it is increasing or decreasing with the independent uh, you can say the strength nothing beyond that then regression comes to the story if you could model a line for this which represent all these data in a fair manner now you know how to predict at a given x level you know what y is but here you don't know this is just a data point you cannot fit a line like this you can but that is not advisable you cannot do something like this you cannot do that that is called overfitting this is an overfitted line when you get a new observation it doesn't have to be in this line right it can be anywhere for the same level of x let's say x1 there could be different different observations depending on the size of data you could have even a single observation where this line goes through or you can have even multiple observations so this data is very dispersed so you have to find some way of modeling this a fair way of modeling this that is why we are using the regression technique to model uh, in a way that it minimizes the error i'll come to that later so we are not going to do this that is overfitting we are the fairest way of doing this is modeling this line okay so if we know a line we know the relationship between the two variables it just gives us y equals mx plus c type line the line equation when you when you know m when you know c if you plug in some value to x you definitely can estimate this so that is basically what's done under regression so it is sort of a modification of correlation analysis where we cannot uh, predict anything we cannot model anything we cannot see the form of relationship by correlation we just can say about the magnitude or the strength or the direction and the direction whether it is increasing or decreasing rather than that you cannot predict uh, a new uh, dependent quantity given the x variable given the value for your x variable so this is just simple linear regression if you have multiple x variables this is going for high dimensional case which we cannot really draw Uh, if we have two variables x1 and x2 we have to draw a line like this and this is not going to be a line it's going to be a plane so we are not going to we are not going to model that we are not going to uh, we are going to model that we are not going to draw that uh, so starting off with simple linear regression okay so this is the motivation for regression um going one step ahead from the correlation analysis so yeah 
correlation analysis measure the strength of association between two variables. When it comes to Pearson's, it has to be interval or ratio scale and quantitative. Okay. So this is basically what I explained just now. Uh, in correlation, we just see the spread of it, but in regression, we get a line. We get a proper model. We get a proper form in a way that it could predict. It has the predicting ability. Okay, applications of regression. Uh, right. So um, this is just one example. Um, yeah, this is it. Use of parents' height to predict children's height. So this is one application of uh, regression, right? Um, if you think uh, the parental height uh, really depends, uh, really affects the child's height. If you say, if the parents are very tall, their children are expected to be taller. So something like that. It means it has some positive correlation. How tall? If somebody asks how tall, then you have to go for regression. Because from correlation, you cannot say this much. So this is just an example. Okay, this is another example application. Um, so this is going to be a multiple um, linear regression because parents are always two, mother and father. So mother's height is going to be our first X variable, X1, let's say. Father's height is going to be our second X variable, X2. And if we think those two are the only factors affecting the child's height, we can model the child's height with mother's height and father's height and see how it's changing. So mother's height, father's height. So Y variable is going to be the child's height. We have to collect a set of data from families. Okay, uh, we take the child's height, we record it, we take the corresponding father's height and mother's height. Or if you are not interested about going for um, a multiple linear regression here, if we really want to capture just a single parent, you can either go with the mother or either go with the father, but it's fair enough. Um, if, if you are going with a single parent, you have to choose between the two or else you can um, get both the heights and take the average, average parental height with child's height. Then you are getting a simple linear regression. So, those are the options that we can go with, but this is just an application of regression. And uh, there's another application investigate. There are so many millions of applications. This is just a couple of selected ones. Investigating the association between uh, gestational age at birth measured in weeks. So it's important to give the unit of measurement uh, when it comes to interpreting. Right, and uh, birth weight measured in grams. Okay, so in this study, they have taken 17 infants, that is, newborn babies, right? Uh, and they have uh, me measured the gestational age at birth, their birth weight, uh, not their birth weight, but um, the mother's weight when, um, yeah, uh, sorry gestational age, not the weight, uh, gestational age at birth. That means uh, their mother's um, age when the mother delivers the baby, okay, in weeks. Um, the baby's age when, when he, gets, he or she gets delivered in weeks, okay, so 34 uh, weeks, um, 36 weeks likewise, in weeks. So this is in weeks. And this is the birth weight. So if we think that we these two has um, some association or the core or a correlation, you can model this. So what is the x variable here? What is the y variable here? When choosing x and y uh, in a given set of data, you cannot say we can choose one of them um, arbitrarily to be the x variable, one of them arbitrarily to be the y variable. No, you cannot say that. Always independent variable comes to x um, and 
y variable is the variable which changes according to x. So here, age actually we cannot uh, control. We cannot control the age. It, it is automatic, right? So this is the x variable suitable x variable here. Um, birth weight changes accordingly. Age is sort of um, like the time axis. So this has to come to the x axis and birth weight is depending on age. It's not the other way around. Age is not depending on the birth weight, right? Age anyway changes irrespective of the birth weight. We, we really don't care for the birth weight. Age flies, right? Time flies. So this is going to be the x variable. This is going to be the y variable. Is there any issue uh, by your end in choosing x and y? When we are given a data set like this, can you clearly identify what is x and what is y? If not, ask now. If anyone is not clear why we took this as the x variable and why we took this as the y variable, ask me. I will explain it once again. Okay, seemingly no questions, good. Uh, but at the exam, don't mix up. Right, um, applications of regression continued. Studying the joint effect of quality of seed, fertility of soil, fertilizer use, temperature, rainfall on rice yield. So can any one of you tell me what are the X variables in this example and what is the Y variable? I want answers. Unmute and speak, please. Rice yield means uh, the resultant of rice that you gain. One of you, please answer. Because it, it's important to know this. I don't like to call upon uh, by index numbers. Uh, please answer. It's the time is going to so please answer. Even in the chat box, what is X? What is Y? What are X's? What is Y in this? Okay, I got some answers in the chat room. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay, one person has answered correctly. Um, okay, I'll call out the number. It's 2018, 535. Um, wait. Uh, yeah, 535 has answered correctly. And uh, yes, it's 2018, 597 has answered correctly. Um, others have uh, missed that. It's okay. Um, so the answer is 
um, studying the joint effect. Okay, so uh, what is this analysis? They are studying the joint effect of some of these on rice here. Just give me a minute. Uh, I'm getting a big sound here. Give me a minute. Okay, I'm extremely sorry about that. I'm, I was getting a huge background noise. Okay, um, sorry. So this study is uh, to study the joint effect. Joint effect means uh, the effect of a couple of factors, right? Of these on rice yield. So depending upon these factors, they measure the rice yield. So rice yield is the Y variable. Why? This rice yield is depending on the quality of the seed, on the fertility of soil, on fertilizer used, on temperature, on rainfall. If you have a lot of, um, um, if you have a big quality in the seed, if, if the a seed is very quality, you can expect more yield, right? If you use a good um, fertilizer, then you can expect a, a good yield, right? In temperature, actually, it might change. It, not maybe in very high temperatures, not maybe in very low temperatures, but in a moderate temperature, it may gain a good yield, even depending upon the rainfall. So. If there are floods, you cannot have a good rice yield, but still if, if there are droughts, still you cannot. So depending on these factors, okay, jointly effect of these factors, how the rice yield is changing. So this is the dependent variable because this variable is depending on these variables. So here, our X variables are quality of seed, fertility of soil, fertilizer used, temperature, and rainfall. Based on these, the rice yield changes. So that is our Y. Thank you very much for those who uh, answered. Um, whether it's right or wrong, that's totally fine. It's always good to try. So we'll try this one as well. Uh, examining whether cigarette consumption is related to various socioeconomic and demographic variables such as age, education, income, etc. So do this for me. What is X? What are Y? Sorry, what, what are X and what is Y? Okay, it's not true. Yes, Ace 2018 496 has answered correctly. Five nine seven, correct. 
three four three correct three uh, five three five correct okay i think you all have, have gotten it now thank you for responding so here they are examining whether this is related to this this is related to this so there could be many x variables or what are the x variables age education income education and income etc they say there could be many but here if we are asked to identify the x variables so it's age education and income uh, so those are the various socioeconomic and demographic variables so socioeconomic means uh, income and education demographic means the age so these variables so as this etc term is given it's okay to say uh, x variables are what various socioeconomic and demographic variables it's okay to say like this or even you can say age education level uh, income and so on you can say even that i just wanted you to identify the two uh, variable types so a cigarette consumption is going to be your y variable right it can be either uh, a categorical variable, which goes to logistic regression. So are you consuming cigarettes? Yes or no? So that goes to logistic regression. So why can take two categories either yes or no? This variable can be uh, measured in several scales of measurement. So if it is uh, nominal, if this is measured in nominal scale, this could incorporate logistic regression. Yes, no question. Are you consuming cigarettes? Yes or no? If yes, yes. If no, no. So consumption of cigarette. So examining whether this happens. Consumption of cigarette, depending upon they do or not, um, how these change. Um, and the other thing is, if this goes in the ratio scale, you can say number of cigarettes consum consumed per day. So that is going in the um, interval sc uh, ratio scale. So that could give you a model, uh, a simple linear regression, a multiple linear regression model. Okay, so number of cigarettes, still examining whether cigarette consumption is related to this. So if you consume more cigarettes, um, sorry, if you, so depending upon this, uh, how much of cigarettes that a person could consume, okay? So if they are uh, less than 18, they might consume zero cigarettes according to the rule, right? Uh, I think it's 21. It's less than 21, they uh, consume zero cigarettes. So very close to zero. So something like that. When age goes really high, they even might not consume a lot of cigarettes. Maybe the middle-aged aged people consume. So you're getting light like this. Okay, so uh, the people who have answered uh, have answered correctly for that. I'm happy that you have, have got this. Um, Data description summaries of data. Okay, so uh, before doing this regression analysis, before model fitting, we have a couple of things to do um, as a practice. Um, so we usually do a descriptive analysis. That is what this says. Uh, drawing pie charts, bar charts, drawing tables, two-way tables, one-way tables we just uh, survey on the sample that is not regression but before doing regression in a data analysis in a typical data analysis steps uh, you incorporate the descriptive analysis first to get some idea about the sample for example um, if your sample um, reads about the gender you might see the composition of that gender how much of females have um, responded in this survey how much of males or how how much of a percentage of males have responded in this survey so things like that in a by a part chart or by a data table one way table you really can um get idea about the data right um so you have to take an idea about the data before blindly modeling it uh, because sometimes 
you might see uh, depending on the descriptive analysis some of the variables are not really significant uh, not really affecting this particular y variable to change so we do not incorporate those variables if we are not really interested if that variable doesn't uh, do significant contribution to the dependent variable we do not make our model complex by including all sorts of variables that we have in our questionnaire even when designing a questionnaire we tend to grab almost every information of people which we really don't need in our data analysis that is why when it comes to research it is ad always advised to consult a statistician beforehand because mo most of the people uh, they do collect data they they design their experiment themselves they collect data and they come to a statistician after everything uh, to do something with this data that is never going to happen unless otherwise there's a huge luck okay uh, so that is why statistician should always uh, help in research um in any domain it can be medicine so even when you were going through these examples you might have uh, noticed so this is something relates to medicine this is something relates to maternal health right this is something relates to agriculture this is something related to so social uh, data or demography right so statistics is universal it is applied in medicine engineering uh in other chemistry physics those sciences um so it's highly multidisciplinary even in sports right it's highly multidisciplinary so whatever it is regression is playing a major role um because people come to us um asking help to analyze their data set they even don't know why they collected the data they even don't know what is their objective so sometimes people collect uh data and come to us asking us to analyze when we ask what i what do you want to have with this data we can play around this data what what is your scope what is your objective they tell some objective but still we cannot do anything with the data that they have collected so that is why uh it's always advised if you if you are conducting some research consult a statistician first tell your objective discuss so that is why statistical consultancy is there right it's in our university as well in the statistics department you can find statistical consultancy there's a unit for that so that is advisable why because we really don't want to make our model complex complex and why we are modeling is to use right to use it if it is not usable it's not going to add value to your research and uh, so that is that that is something extra but still very um, connected to this regression so you all would be doing research as you all might have started you all would be doing it in your extended year maybe in your final year if you are studying ahead even if you're if you do an msc or a phd you really need those things so be mindful in that as well um okay so we anyway do a data description summary we take summaries of data we uh check the means and other descriptive statistics things like that parameter estimation is assuming that uh, the underlying mechanism of the data generating process is known for example this let's say we have one x variable one y variable so betas are just the parameters so these are the notations that we are going to use throughout this course so this is not simple linear regression although it just has one x variable Uh, this is simple but not linear so it has something like this so anyway this is also a model by using some sort of regression this is also a model model that they have fixed so if we uh, modeling means based on x we um try to estimate beta 1 and beta 2 using regression techniques and we let this error get very closer to zero right because we don't need error in our analysis but we cannot make it zero zeroth error is not practical that comes when it uh, comes with overfitting error is zero if we try to draw a line for all the scatters that we have in our plot plot 
that is not advisable that is not what regression is we try to minimize error as much as possible okay and hence the aim is to estimate the model parameters these two so we call them the regression parameters or the model parameters it doesn't have to be always beta 1 and beta 2 it can be beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 beta beta i goes from 1 to n you can uh, 0 to n right uh, so this is the beta is the notation that we use in this course uh, for regression parameters. It's just like y equals mx plus c, m and c are just like beta one and beta two, right? Uh, so our intention is to estimate this because we know the data. We if we estimate these, if we can have values for this, we just it's just a matter of plugging in x values to obtain the predicted y, right? So that is our intention by using the model. That is how you use it. So throughout this course, we are learning how to estimate this and some other stuff related to that. Okay, prediction. The most reliable region for the prediction is within the range of x space. Be careful when extrapolating. So in regression, extra, I'll tell you what extrapolation is. Um, okay, so let's say we have a set of data like this. Okay, and uh, for this, we say uh, we fitted a line like this. Just assume we have data here as well. This is the last data point, okay. So, this is our data range. We have our data within this range. We don't have data more than this value, less than this value. We don't have data. We have not collected data, right? We know from this point to this point. Extrapolating means you continue this line with the same slope infinitely long both the ends for both the ends you can do that this is what you call extrapolating this is what you call extrapolating right so this is not advisable in regression because why we fit this model for this data. We don't know after this point whether this data would go in this direction. We do not know. What if after this point, our data varies like this? Then this extrapolation is very wrong. When we get a new observation somewhere here, we are going to predict this as this value. But still, this regression line should go like this, okay? In real terms. If we had data, we are never gonna um, model this like this. Like either we could have a curvy linear line, a curved line like this, so our true prediction should be 
some they are here see the gap so that is why extrapolating is not advisable in regression even to this side we don't know after this point how this data would vary we don't know whether this line goes something like this or whether this line we don't know even it might go like this it doesn't matter if that is the case but we don't know we modeled this line in a way that it minimized the error depending upon this data only if that is the case why we are plotting this if we want so these are the points that we know right if we want to predict a value for this particular x variable it is important to have a line because if we we have this data point we have this data point we have this data point so we have all these data points in our data set what if we want to predict this one if x takes this value what is the corresponding y variable so without a model so i i'll write it in terms of this beta not is something like c okay i'll write it like that so i'll put a small hat here because this is the estimated value without error we let error goes to zero expected value of error is zero i'll come to that um so ex estimated y value depending upon these estimated beta not estimated beta one if we give a new value to x if we know these values we can predict y value it's like going along this line reading this value we can do that only if we have a regression line but if we have some observation somewhere here but we do not have data around that point it is not advisable to extrapolate this and read the observation it is not advised because we don't know how these data would uh, relate to y after this point right so that is the reason why we are not advising extrapolation in regression if we don't have anything to do we have to but within brackets we have to say uh, this might not be valid yes we can extrapolate we can plug in any value to x even though x is varied between some points let's say a and b if although x is varied between a and b we can plug in some value which is more than b or which is less than a and get some value to y but we can not uh, be sure we cannot be very specific about it we cannot guarantee that this will give you uh, the expected outcome so that is why extrapolation is not advised here so that is what we say here the most reliable reason most reliable reason for prediction is within the range of x within the range the smallest data point that you have in your data set and the largest data point that you have in your data set right x space be careful when extrapolating so you have to be careful you can do but be careful see this is the fitted line so after some point it's going this is the relationship that they have really but if we extrapolate this we are going in this way which is incorporating very huge errors okay control so this is another term fabric welding is the process of joining uh, of clothes using heat and pressure fabric welding it's just like iron welding right same concept it's not like iron when it's just so same concept right joining of clothes using uh, heat and pressure one can fit a regression model to investigate how the strength of joint uh, varies with the heat and pressure when we, when the heat and pressure changes that joint line the link between the two clothes how the strength 
varies whether it is going to be very strong under high heats very weak under high heats we don't know if somebody is interested to model that when there's high pressure whether it's going to strengthen or weaken we don't know so strength is going to be our y variable in that case heat and pressure are going to be our x variables depending upon these two how the strength changes uh the equation can be used control the process and select the particular predictor combination to produce the required strength so this is something like this you collect so the experiment is this you uh take a couple of pressure levels that you can practically handle you take a couple of heat levels that you can practically handle okay then you take fabrics and under similar conditions you use uh, different different combinations of this pressure and heat and measure the strength of the linkage and you model it and uh, there is a standard strength it doesn't have to be very strong it doesn't have to be very weak either right there should be some standard uh strength that uh, the people in that fabric domain really know right uh so you just read along the y axis the strength axis so this is you are going in the reverse order right you check along the y axis and you pick which strength and which uh sorry which pressure and which heat you should incorporate to obtain the strength that you really want to have so the prediction x variable and y variables goes in in line goes with the same thing same concept but you are not predicting y depending upon x there you did that using the model but when you are applying the model you are doing it other way around if i be more specific with that it's something like this so we have three axes is there it can be either negative heat can be negative right um so let's say this is our y the strength let's say this is our x1 heat this is our x2 pressure okay so this is in the 3d plane right we have a couple of heats and couple of pressures so yeah sort of modeling this let's say we get something like this we are getting a plane anyway right so let's say you want to have you want to maintain this standard strength so you depending on these heats and these pressures you are getting different different strengths let's assume uh the factory wants you to find out the heat corresponding heat and pressure that you want to incorporate in order to maintain this particular strength so you go along this line you don't have to go along this line you don't have to handle this pictorially but you can go with the model right you check which point this will give you uh, the related heat and the related pressure so you are going to read these two values so this is also an application in regression right so you are reading it other way around but still this is called regression this is your y this is your x all right 
this is just to give you a motivation. We are not going to handle things like this in here, but it would be very important for your research. Okay. Basic concepts. Um, right. Statistical model has two essential ingredients of statistical relation. One, a tendency of a responsive vari response variable Y to vary with a predictor variable X in a systematic fashion. It should be systematic. We just cannot look at the plots, look at the scatters and just uh, draw the line by hand. You cannot do that. You have to um, incorporate something systematic there. A scattering of points around the curve of statistical relationship. Okay, that's, that's what we discussed. So these two are the essential ingredients uh, in relation to statistics, to this regression. These two characteristics are embodied in regression model by postulating that there is a probability distribution of Y for each level of X. That means uh, the, the means of these probability distributions varies in some systematic fashion with X. What does it mean? Okay, so this is the pictorial representation of the regression model. The systematic relationship is called the regression function. Okay, we have different different observations which we assume that this follows some distribution, right? Okay, and uh, we pick a fair point which represent each and every distribution of Y, okay? And the systematic relationship is called the regression function or the regression curve. So to represent all these points, they have picked this point. To represent all these points, they have picked this point. To represent all these points in this X level, they have picked this point. And they have simply joined these couple of points to form this regression line. That's what they have done. Okay, so here the X variable is media evaluation. This is just an example they have taken to explain this. Uh, so how, Year end evaluation depends upon media evaluation. That's how they, but they have regressed over upon. So when media evaluation is 50, they have found different uh, year end evaluations, different data points, different, different data points. So for that, it follows some distribution that data are coming from a certain distribution that we assume to have, right? and we take an average value to represent that. Similarly, for each level of X, to each level of the independent variable, we do this process and find a fair point, uh, a representative point for each level. And we are joining that. That is basically what regression uh, function uh, relies on. The graph of the regression function is called the regression curve. So the function is the mathematical format of it. Um, this is the line, the line that we see is basically the regression curve. Okay, since we have time, we can move ahead. Uh, we have nearly an hour. So this is the end of uh, the slides. But anyway, I'm going to continue. I have to give you some uh, small, small um, eye openings. So
Okay, I'll give you out the assumptions of regression. Uh, as long as you have um, continuous y variables, continuous scale y and x variables, you cannot form the regression line all the time. You can, but you have to um, meet a couple of assumptions. Basically, we have three assumptions that we discuss here. Okay, so um, I'll explain that to you one by one. These are not in the note, um, so you can take down. Okay, so if you remember conditional probability, you will know what this really means. At a given X level, what is Y? Probability A given B, you might remember this. We form it as A intersection B. We did something like this, right? So this is not this, but what does this mean? When we are given that the event B has happened, what is the probability that event A will happen? So this is what this basically means, and it is computed in this way, right? So this same notation, same, this is the condition notation. Same notation is used here with the same idea. This is not talking about probabilities, but um, the same notation here, conditioned on X, right? So what we do here is, here we fix x and conditionally we say that y has a normal distribution with mean, mu, and variance sigma squared. Okay, what does that mean? So this is Y, this is X. Why I put I here? Because you'll, you'll know, okay? So let's say um, so I'll write it in simple letters because these are the values of X. So let's say X naught. These are the levels, X1, X2, X3, X4, likewise, okay? And here, let's say we have observed under X naught, okay? So we are reading X values and Y values. When it is X naught, this might take um, X naught one, sorry, Y naught one, so this is. When it is again X naught, we might have Y naught two. Likewise, we can have multiple observations for the same X level we can have in our data set. Okay, when it comes to X1, here, this level, we might find uh, 
y1 y1 1 and maybe for x1 we can have y not 2 it's okay we can have the same observation right and again for x1 we can have y not 1 even we can have another observation somewhere here right that is uh, say by x so likewise when we have a huge data set we can read several x values and several y values okay so by this what they are talking is so i'm not writing this for everything i'm just putting things like this okay right so um so in general, we can fit um, a line like this to this in general. In general, so this is just a subjective line. Okay, P people can draw even a line like this, depending upon how they really um, handle the errors. We can have many. So depending on the technique, we can have just a unique line so here um, we have a single x variable single y variable right uh, what we are doing here is how do we form this line let's say this is our line what this means is at a given x level when i is equal to zero at a given x level the distribution of y the distribution of y is normally distributed with some mean and a variance, okay? At x1, when i is equal to one, this is the distribution of y, which has some mean and some variance. But here, the assumption is, Yes, the mean can change. What is the mean of this? Somewhere here. No? What is the mean of this? Somewhere here. Mean of this, somewhere here. Mean of this, somewhere here. Mean of this, somewhere here. So basically, we are getting a line like this, if that is the case, right? So the mean can change. That is why it's given as mu i okay depending upon the level of x for each y this is the distribution right it says it is normally distributed normally distributed it has to be normal distribution but it's the same variance so in this type of a case we really cannot do regression uh, in a row way like this because can you see here the variance is very small here the variance is very large because we have a lot of um, data points here in a very dispersed manner the variance is something like this here if this is the case, the variance is something like this. So this has um, sigma 1 squared. This has a variance of sigma 2 squared, where sigma 1 squared is not equal to sigma 2 squared. This cannot happen if we want to fit a regression line. So the assumption, the first assumption is why variables at a given x level should be normally distributed with some mean but the same variance throughout all these x variables what we expect here is something like this
I don't draw the uh, status because it's um, you know it's really hard to um, show. Let's say this is our line. And for this particular X level, we have a normal distribution for the ith level of X. We have a normal distribution. These data points are normally distributed. We, have, we should have a high density here to be more precise. That is why this curve is going up. If we have something like this, it should be something like the distribution should be uniform. If we have a high density here in the middle and a very low density to the ends, just because of this density, you can say this is now, right? That is how this distribution is covered. So it says, it should always uh, be very close to the mean, right? Uh, and little bit of observations by the size. So this gap, this gap is set by the variance, right? This gap should be the same with the next X level. That's what it says. This is the mean, right? This gap, let's say sigma squared, it should be the same with this gap. It should be the same with the next X level as well. So we are talking about two things here. At a given X level, the distribution of Y, that is Y, y given X, okay? The distribution of Y should be normally distributed with a particular mean, mean can change, it has to, right? Otherwise it's going to be a straight regression line if the mean doesn't change. Mean can change, it can be either increasing or decreasing, doesn't matter. But the variance should be the same. So that is our first assumption in regression. Just take a screenshot of this. Okay. Um, okay, here, actually the first, there are three assumptions basically. Uh, so the first and the second assumptions are going in line. First assumption is uh, X given Y, I, all these should be normally distributed. That is the first assumption. Second assumption is that it's the variance should be constant irrespective of the level of X, right? So if you are asked to write the regression assumptions uh, for the first two assumptions, it's okay to write this and keep. Or you can, by words, you can say the first assumption is You can simply say, first assumption is um, Y is normally distributed at a given X level. This is how you say in words. It's more precise to write it like this because this is complete. When you say some variable is normally distributed, you always have to give the parameters, right? What mean and the variance, otherwise it's not complete. We don't know which mean, which variance. It's okay if you are asked to state the assumptions, you can simply say this, and you have to say variance of, of that normal distribution
should be constant. Or either you can say uh, does not depend on the level of x. You can say that. Third assumption is, right, observations are independent. If you want to say this thing also in a single statement like this, right? What you have to write is I, I, D. Independent and identically distributed. Okay, so this particular thing is independent and identically distributed in this manner. That's what it says. So if you're asked to write the assumptions you can state this one, but you have to mention what is y, what is x, what is mu, and what is sigma squared, right? You have to mention that. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a complete note on that, right? Write the regression assumptions, or you can simply write this one, this one, and this one. Okay. All these three are captured in this single statement, but you have to mention what these are, okay? So if I repeat, at a given level of x, y should be normally distributed with some mean and the same variance, same variance for each x level. And this should be independent. Observations should not be dependent upon the level of x. What does it really mean? You um, assume that you are doing some experiment by taking records out of people some volunteers as the respondents, okay? If that is the case, uh, you read some, you record some uh, data from the first person, and that is it. You record some data from the second person, but there, these should not be dependent. That is what it means. These persons should be independently answering you. If there is a dependency, if there's some order of collecting your data, you cannot use regression to model it. Always the observations should be independent from all the other observations. If we take one observation, one record from this person, it should be totally independent from the other person's response. That is what it means. So you can... By notation, you can say IID. IID means identical and independently distributed. Independent and identically distributed. You can either switch this word. Independent and identically distributed or identical and independently distributed. IID. Right, uh, identical means exactly the same. Okay, exactly the same means it has the same distribution, same normal distribution for everything. Right, independent means it's not depending upon y i is not depending upon y y one is not depending upon y two, given the x level. Okay. Uh, so just take a small screenshot of it. You can write it later on. Um, so basically, if you are asked the regression assumptions, you can write this.
Okay, so uh, this is basically what you have to write. Um, you can talk this in terms of errors as well. So we'll come to that later on. Uh, usually, um, yeah, there's a set of assumptions for the error terms as well. Um, yes, it's going to be something very similar, only the mean is going to be changed. Errors are there. Uh, so we'll come to that next time. Uh, Okay, so that is it for today. We can finish off the lectures um, lecture now. Mm, right. Do you have any questions regarding today's lesson? We can start off the next thing uh, next time uh, in the next lecture. Do you have any questions uh, on today's lecture? If you have questions, you can ask. Otherwise, you can uh, leave the session. Thank you very much for um, attending today's lecture. So if you have questions, you can stay and ask. Otherwise, leave. Thank you very much. Stay safe.